Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's, it's 10 o'clock, um, so let's start this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you for making time to attend uh, Chalkstring's uh, webinar on the introducing SIM for cost information management. Hopefully you can hear me all. First of all, welcome. Uh, a bit of housekeeping. Um, hopefully you heard the go to webinar announcer uh, when you signed in. If you didn't, could you just please just check your audio settings, as you'll see on the right hand side, uh, you can adjust your microphone and your speakers um, and it should be automatically picking up your, your uh, audio device, but please just check that if you can't hear me. If you have any problems, please just type in the text box to let us know. We do recommend using a headset for this for the best uh, experience. Um, you will be automatically muted during the webinar, um, but you naturally will have questions during the webinar. So please feel free to type those questions into the chat box and we'll receive these and try and answer some questions at the end. Uh, any questions we can't, can't cover, we're we'll happy to talk with you one to one on obviously. And if you can minimize all your windows down, um, then so you can see the full screen, then you should be able to see everything we go through. So that's the housekeeping side of things over. So introductions, first of all, my name is Barry Chapman. Um, I'm a director and a co-founder of Chalkstring. Uh, my background is very much in, in construction. Uh, I have a civil engineering degree. I've worked as a quantity surveyor for a main contractor, um, and, and you can see my profile on LinkedIn, but it's all very much about construction, construction software, and working with contractors. Um, so I'm, I'm leading this webinar today, and hopefully give you a good flavor of what SIM is all about, uh, and the Chalkstring application. So let's start off with what is SIM? Uh, there's a lot of acronyms around these days, so what does SIM actually mean? So obviously, it stands for Cost Information Management, that's in the title of the webinar. But what does that truly mean? So really what SIM is, is a framework to enable contractors to create, share and manage cost data, but specifically during the construction phase of a, a project. And this is everything from cradle to grave. So starting with estimating or pricing the project right through to final account. So it's the whole end to end solution, but it's about managing, creating and managing that cost data and having it stored in one accessible central location where everyone can access it. So in this way, anyone in the team who of course has the appropriate permissions to be able to access the data can of course dip into this and view it, edit it, modify it and, and use it for whatever purpose is required. And my examples there would be to analyze cost spend on a project, uh, to investigate why uh, spend is over or under, to generate progress valuations, maybe produce purchase orders, those sorts of things. <clears throat> And ultimately using SIM, using this centralized approach, you reduce the number of errors and mistakes. And it means that the whole team are always using the up-to-date latest information and you can be confident there's no version issues and so on. So it's a, it's a big concept, but in, in high, high level, that's really what SIM is all about. It's a, it's a way of managing and creating data and storing it and accessing it. So more specifically, if you implement a SIM framework, you'll be able to do a number of things. First of all is improve your real-time visibility of how your construction project is running. So having at your fingertips real-time up-to-date live data with all your accrued costs, essentially it's a live CBR every minute of the project. So you've got that visibility so you can make more informed decisions on the project. You will be able to ensure your governance and, and control. So making sure that you have audit trails and you're controlling who uses the data, who can see the data, and making sure your processes are in place to make sure that the, you've got the governance side of your business, uh, particularly if you're a larger business. SIM also supports ISO procedures. So by using SIM, you will have documented workflows and procedures and, and processes. So that actually helps support the ISO accreditation side of your business. So it's a structured way of working. It enables sustained business growth. And, and by that, typically it's because what SIM enables you to do is to actually manage more work with less resource. So therefore you can grow your turnover without growing your overheads and it enables the business to grow in a very controlled way once you've got these processes and these platforms in place. A lot of it is about reducing errors um, and, and mitigating risk and reducing waste. So if you're not putting data into lots of different systems, you're obviously being more efficient, but then you're also not risking uh, errors in the duplication, um, and therefore you're mitigating your risk. Um, the waste aspect of it could be reducing the amount of material waste, overordering of materials, or it could be overpaying subcontractors. Waste can be so many different things, but this is all about controlling the waste and reducing errors and risk to your business. 
It's about becoming more streamlined, more efficient, more collaborative in how you work across your business, making sure the whole team is using the same data and working collaboratively, which makes you more profitable. And it's about standardization of reports, so making sure that everyone across the business is using the same set of reports, the same standards, the same format to add that consistency to the business. So once implemented, SIM can offer you <coughs> excuse me, many different benefits at a commercial business level, um, and we're going to explore these in more detail as we go through the webinar. So the first thing I think to say is SIM is relevant for any business size. I think a lot of people assume this is just about the big boys and the big main contractors, and that simply isn't the case. Um, so if you look at our, our client portfolio, we work with a range of, of, of customer sizes. And at the small level, the micro level, it's all really about helping small businesses run lean, um, run efficiently, um, and make sure that they're putting the platform in place to be able to scale uh, effectively, um, and to be able to take on the bigger jobs and start challenging the larger players um, with their very process-led approach. So you can scale the business without uh, scaling your overheads and having to hire lots of new staff and, and pushing your overheads up. So at sort of the small level, it's all about efficiency and running lean. As we then move into larger organizations, so small, medium enterprises, SME businesses, and you'll notice I haven't put any values to these businesses because it's, 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 this is conceptual, but as you move to larger organizations, it's really about standardizing processes, making sure the whole team are adopting a set of defined processes to work smoothly and efficiently in a very predictable way. And what we're seeing is lots of SMEs particularly talk about this concept of punching above their weight, i.e. taking on the big jobs from the big boys and really going in leaner, um, and more effectively and more efficiently and making good margin out of it whilst really challenging the larger players. And if you're a large organization, it's all those things I've said, plus it's also about helping you maintain that, that position in the market. Um, and if you're uh, financed by external funders or you're a PLC or you've got shareholders, uh, then obviously it's about making sure they're, they're happy that you've got the processes in place to protect uh, their investment in the business. So it depends what size of business you are, but it's equally applicable for the large, the big boys, right down to the, to the small guys. And um, really the sort of cutoff point we look at here really is that any business north of a million pounds turnover should be and could be implementing SIM very effectively. So in terms of the SIM framework, what SIM does is it provides a, a basically a, what we call a GRC framework, a, a governance, risk and control framework to help you manage those projects. And just to talk about those in turn, uh, first of all, governance. Uh, governance is all about adhering to not just your internal processes that you've defined, but also making sure obviously that you adhere to external um, regulations and so on that are imposed on you from externally. But a lot of this is about the internal processes, governance within your business, making sure projects are run in a way that you, you decide and you want them to be run. So it's the governance aspect. It's about risk, so it's all about eliminate, eliminating errors um, and keeping a, a watch for life for the future to make sure you're identifying and, and, and dealing with any threats that are arising. So it's about de-risking your business and obviously risk in construction is a, a massive uh, challenge which we all face. So this is about de-risking your business, everything from making an error which is gonna cost you money through to um, looking at longer term uh, project, project productivity, seeing if you're going to make the margins you expect, identifying if you have any problems early on in the contract. So it's about de-risking uh, your project and your business. And it's about providing more control um, and in this context, it's really about giving you more instant visibility and indeed predictability of your project financials. So often customers tell us that they, they don't know what margin they're going to make until the end of the contract, until they've done the final account, and then they end up with a figure which they might not like, but it's too late to change that. This is all about giving you that control, that predictability, so at all times you know what your, uh, what your margin will be and you can take corrective action if you need to. So this is the sort of the GRC framework, governance, risk and control. And those are the things that we're looking to, to focus on. Ultimately, it's all about collectively giving you more improved decision making, giving you more information at your fingertips so you can run projects better and ultimately make more margin, which is the end goal here. And the chances are, depending on your business side and your approach to to, to systems, it may well be that you do have some procedures in place, which is great news. Um, SIM is just a way of helping you standardize, formalize that. So hopefully there's some thought provoking things we'll go through here, which, which may be able to help you in that process. 
So those are the things we're going to cover, governance, risk and control. Now, very often people think that SIM is just a piece of software. I'm going to buy a bit of software. I bought SIM. It's not strictly true. It's actually three things. It's people, processes and it's technology. Those three things together enable you to leverage SIM. So first of all, people, obviously the people are very important to be able to not just plan and work out what you want to do, but also to control it as well. So the people in your business, the management team and the stakeholders within the project team are key to this. So the people are a big part of, of the SIM framework. The process is the way in which we will then achieve these objectives. Um, and again, that's a secondary, very important part. This is defining processes. It's all well and good having the people and having a bit of software, but how do you want to use it? What, what, what is the best way you can use it for your business? So the processes is a big part of it. And obviously technology is all about what tools do you use to deliver SIM? Um, and for the purpose of today, clearly we'll be focusing on the technology aspect of this, but it's, it's one part of three. You need the people, you need the processes to be thought out, and you need the technology in place. And clearly we're focused on the technology today. So in terms of SIM, SIM, SIM technology, most contractors we speak to, if not all, use a range of different solutions to manage their project costs. Um, typically, uh, we see from the smallest to the biggest customers, Excel has a massive place within these businesses. And it's a range of generally personalized Excel worksheets that have probably been adapted over the years, but it's lots of different worksheets quite possibly. They may have been handed down across different people within the business. So you're using someone else's worksheet. But ultimately, projects these days of every size are run on a range of individual, what we call point solutions, different bits of software for doing different things without any connectivity. And that's normal, that's standard. So if that's what you're doing, you know, you're, you're in good company. Everyone, everyone does that until they implement SIM. By comparison, if you implement a SIM solution, it offers you so much more. Um, and, and on the right hand side, you'll see some of the key things, but a SIM solution is, is truly will be an end to end solution that covers everything from estimating and pricing the job right through to final account and, and everything in between. So procurement, variations, valuations, applications, paying subcontractors, all those things, all within one single system. And that then means it needs to be multi-user so that everyone can access the data simultaneously. And that's a big part of the SIM solution is this multi-user access, the ability to share data. Um, so if, for example, a variation occurs, once that variation is put into the SIM product, then automatically everyone who is affected by that variation can see the implications of that variation. So it's the ability to share data openly across the business in a controlled way. It's real time. So there's no concept here of having to fudge man monthly manual CVRs at the end of the month to, to find out where you are. This is real time reporting, including all your accrued costs or your committed costs. Uh, modern software obviously is cloud hosted. Um, and to me, to me, that's a big part of this is having accessibility. So being able to access the cloud uh, hosted data on the go on mobiles, um, standardization of reporting, Purpose written is very much written for contractors, whereas spreadsheets, of course, are incredibly generic. Um, and of course, a look, big part of this is about managing your users, their access and their permissions to make sure that they can, they can only do and see what you want them to do and see. So there's a whole host of things there in that graphic, which hopefully just get you thinking. This is what SIM is all about. It's about control, but it's about an integrated single sol solution that covers all these things, as opposed to all your individual spreadsheets and point solutions. So in terms of when you should consider SIM, if there's a report from PwC that says they would suggest that you are proactive rather than reactive, don't wait till something goes wrong to look at this because then it's too late. Try and be proactive about it if you can. And, and some of the triggers that, that we, we see all the time are things like failures in your existing methods. So if you've run a bad job that hasn't gone well, that's cost you money or you've made a loss or it just hasn't gone as you, as you wanted, um, that could be a time to think, well, actually, that wasn't wasn't a good experience. What can we learn from that? Could SIM be a solution to help me uh, you know, run the business better and learn from that, that mistake or those problems? It could simply be that the deep down recognition, you need better control. So you might just know in your gut, in your heart of hearts, that you know you're not as efficient as you could be or should be. Um, and the business perhaps has grown at a, a pace over the last five years. And, and, and with it, the pain has grown, but you, you don't quite know what the problem is. Well, that again, could be a trigger to think that well, SIM could be a, could be a, a solution for you. 
um, maybe it's an increased risk. So maybe you're taking on larger projects now than you ever thought you would. Um, and you're telling your contractor you can do them, you know, your client, you can do them confidently, but deep down you're thinking, gosh, that's a big project, big risk. How am I going to deliver that? Well, that could be a reason where, where SIM can really come in and help you. Or maybe it's the risk of very topical coronavirus. You know, this whole concept of working from home, accessing data on the go, that's a risk none of us could have foreseen. But again, that's something that SIM is helping uh, with, with people who are using it because they can access that data on the go remotely. It could be internal processes changing within your business. It could be the business actively looking for a change of direction, looking to pursue different sectors or different markets. Um, or it could indeed be things like updated legislation that has an effect on your business. So there could be any number of triggers that might make you think that SIM um, can be beneficial. Typically, we see it's the top three or four of the ones that most of our customers talk to us about. Recognition that better controls are required or indeed larger projects, more complex projects coming in. So questions to ask yourself really are, are these sorts of things. And these are based on, on feedback we get from customers all the time when we're speaking to, to customers both before and after they've signed up. So things like, are you, are you struggling with keeping control of, of the business or indeed of projects? as the business grows so as you're hiring more people all that information that was once stored in your head in a very controlled compartmentalized way are you having to let go of that now and hand that to your team and is that giving you grief sleepless nights is it a problem well if it is sim is part of a solution you know, do you know deep down gut feel perhaps that you're not as efficient as you could be do you know your team isn't efficient and they're re-entering data you think you're over ordering materials because at the end of every job you end up with a couple of skips full of waste material which is basically profit going into the bin do you suspect your suppliers are overpaying you but you're not really able to control that as well as you want and sometimes you've got to be very honest with these questions I mean, no one likes to admit these things but if these areas are causing you pain then sim could be a solution for you are you frustrated that you can't see how your projects are running? So you have your monthly CVRs, um, and then at that point you get a position of your valuation and, and, and your financial position, but it takes a lot of effort to get that CVR pulled together. Um, it's only once a month, and then at the end of having done all that work, the next day it's out of date again. So do you get frustrated that you don't have that finger on the pulse on how your projects are running, and really you're ending up making the profit you make rather than actually controlling and identifying problems? And maybe being, being honest, maybe just, you're, you're just fed up of relying on lots of different disconnected spreadsheets, recognizing spreadsheets aren't controlled. They're not um, controlled in the slightest. You know, people write them, they're their own bit of coding. Generally, they're not password protected. People can fiddle with them. But one, one mistake in any one spreadsheet can cost you an enormous amount of money. And maybe it's that, it's that issue is giving you sleepless nights. So these are the kind of questions you might want to ask yourself if you're thinking about SIM. They're the sort of triggers that people talk to us about. So let's now look at SIM in relation to the, the industry and how technology moves on. So first of all, let's be very honest about this. We can't hide from this fact that as a, as a sector, we've always lagged way behind other sectors in terms of our adoption of technology. So the graphic on the right-hand side here um, is a McKinsey report um, showing all the different sectors down the left-hand side, you can see those, um, and construction, languishes at the bottom always does in this case we're got the pride of position of one up from agriculture and hunting which um, we should be very proud of and this is looking at really how how we've adopted and embraced digital technology across the entire sector and of course you'd expect it media finance to be right at the top which of course they are but we're always at the bottom um, of all these league tables so we are slow to embrace technology as a sector and that's a fact i think we can probably all recognize the reasons for that, I believe, are the fact that I think that as construction professionals, I believe we're conservative, we are risk averse. Um, we don't like taking risks, it's the very nature of what we do, because we're building prototypes all the time and we don't want to take risks, we just don't like that. Very often we're not seen to be high tech. I mean, it's just bits of lumps of uh, concrete and, and bits of metal stuck together, isn't it? You know, it's that kind of concept where we know construction is so much more advanced than that, but we're perceiving things to be quite a, a low tech industry. And of course, we're always busy, 
with our noses to the grindstone managing projects and, and dealing with critical projects. And you'll all have seen that graphic on there, you know, no thanks, we're too busy. Well, that's the reality. You, you, you're firefighting, working on projects, and very often there isn't enough time put aside for considering these kind of technologies. And there's never a better time than now, of course, as we're all got a bit of downtime working from home um, and with, with less to do. So it's just worth throwing that in the pot. But those are the reasons why I believe we generally lag behind in terms of technology adoption. And just a few more stats to back that up. There's, there was a, a KPMG report done a few years back, which shows that if you look at construction as a whole, 69% admit that they're behind the curve or, or following industry. So those two bottom lines on the graph there um, are showing the 33% and 36%, totaling obviously 69%. Those people are admitting that they are either behind the curve or indeed following industry. So those are the people who are not trailblazers, but they are implementing technology once it's been adopted and proven. So we know we're not adopting technology as quickly as we should. It's, um, it's well documented. If you then drill down in that report and then look at contractors, 64% of contractors, so roughly the same sort of figure, admit exactly the same, that they are either behind the curve or they are following the industry which goes really with this whole thing about being conservative and not wanting to take risks. But ultimately, it also presents a huge opportunity to us because there's a lot of untapped technology out there which we, we should be implementing, which can have an, an enormous impact on our, our business and our sectors. Now, the good news is this is not a new concept. So what I want to demonstrate with this slide really is, is that this is not something new and it's not something we should be fearful of. If you look at three stages of, of, of evolution, if you like, across the top, you'll see I've got manual documents, digital documents, and information management. And this is a very simplistic slide, but this just tries to track the evolution of how things have evolved over the years in construction. So by manual documents, I'm talking about individually handwritten documents, generally start, stored in paper copy in a LibreArch file. So we're going back to the dark ages there. But that's how we started in construction. More so these days, we've moved across to digital documents. So, you know, Excel and drawings and AutoCAD and Word, those sorts of things. But ultimately, they're still individual documents. They're not connected, they're, but they've been drawn digitally. It's still not easy to stare, share them because they are individual silos of data. And on the right hand side, we're looking more about the information management side of things. If we take the concept of BIM, and everyone I would have hoped would have heard of the concept of BIM, building information modeling. Um, just trying to depict that, we've started on the drawing boards, drawing hand drawings. Yes, we've made the revolutionary leap to the middle section, which is all about AutoCAD and producing drawings electronically, but they're still individual dumb drawings. They're just 2D or 3D lines, arcs, and circles to depict, depict the, the construction. Only when we made a move across to BIM, which is the third, the right-hand side picture, did we really start to harness the power of connected data, intelligent information, and enabling information to be shared collaboratively. So Tecla Structures, Autodesk Revit, two, two prominent players in the market are, are, are people who are companies who are really, really pushing that forward and have seen a massive transformation in how we've moved from handwritten drawings to AutoCAD to, to BIM models. And concept is the same with PIM. You may or may not come across PIM, which is project information management. It's the same concept. Handwritten drawings, notes, letters, correspondence. Yes, we moved across then into using it digitally and putting it into Word and Outlook and PDFs and DWGs. And it was all stored in central servers or SharePoint or whatever. But again, it was just individual digital documents not connected, stored within a central repository. And it's only when we make the move across to PIM on the right hand side that you truly have that intelligent, connected, a database of information where you can search for uh, data, store it effectively and so on. And that's the move to PIM. So guess what? SIM is exactly the same. You know, we're going from handwritten ledger books and handwritten rate buildups in the dark ages. And obviously that is going back some time, but we're very much in the middle section at the moment where we've got lots of Excel files. So a digital version of the same thing, but they're not intelligent, they're just text the numbers in a spreadsheet, you'll have lots of worksheets, they don't talk to each other, they're error prone, etc. So the transformation here is about moving from that across to a SIM solution, in this case, Chalkstring on the right hand side, showing how you have a, 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 an integrated system. So it's not a new concept, it's one that we've, we've, been, we've been doing for 20, 30 years at least, 
uh, and SIM just follows the same path. So in terms of the adoption curve, hopefully you'll be familiar with the whole the whole curve, the bell curve here, uh, crossing the chasm, if you like, uh, where you've got your early innovators on the left-hand side of the, the real go-getters who want to trial new technology, then you've got your early adopters who, who want to really embrace it. We're very much now in that early majority phase where it's really good news for anyone who's not using SIM. It's not revolutionary. It's not new. It's risk-free. Others have done all the trailblazing and the hard work and the experimenting. You can now adopt SIM comfortable in the knowledge that it's risk-free and it's, it's a proven technology. And the key is doing that before you get too late, because if you start implementing in the late majority or the laggard stage, you're too late as the curve is, is, is bearing away. So now is the time to, to do it on that, on that rise within the early majority. And of course, in terms of technology, you know, okay, it, it's contentious, depending on which mobile network you're on, but the stat I've got is that we're pushing sort of almost well, 99 plus percent mobile data coverage now across the UK population. Obviously, 5G around the corner coming out, uh, has started coming out already. We've all got mobile tech in our pockets. We're comfortable with that. There shouldn't be any issues there at all. And of course, data storage is incredibly cheap now. If you look at the numbers, it's so, so cheap. So these are technologies that we're, we're all comfortable with, um, which is a big part of under, underlying the, the SIM uh, strategy. And of course, we all use this kind of technology every day without even thinking. So whether it's Netflix to stream movies right now, as we probably all are, or buying online or online banking or betting or Tinder or whatever it might be, we're very comfortable with using technology every day. And this is this is the technology used for, for, for true tim, SIM solutions. So really what we're solving here is that in reality, from the smallest to the largest organization, you're more than likely to have lots and lots of different data silos. Um, and without SIM, they're going to be disconnected. So there's gonna be a lot of manual data transfer. So you'll be duplicating effort and putting, putting yourself at risk, of course. Your reporting can't be up to date if it's working in that fashion. Processes will be quite manual and quite tedious and ineffective. And there's unlikely to be much standardization. And Excel is still the big go-to for most companies, irrespective of size. So HS2 will be run heavily on Excels. It's just a fact of life. But the reality is that according to that KPMG survey, 73% of contractors can't press one button to get up-to-date real-time project data instantly. It's a case of having to scrabble around, interpret Excels and compile reports manually, which is just crazy to me. And then when you look at that on top of that, that uh, there was a Forbes survey done a couple of years ago uh, where they, they investigated spreadsheets across all sectors and collectively they established 88% of those spreadsheets looked at actually contained errors that were deemed to be significant. So these could be, these could be potentially very, very costly errors, of course. So do you really want your business based on, on that kind of technology? So that's really what we're solving is trying to give you connected data, reduce your duplication, give you up-to-date reports uh, and make life a lot easier. So if we then look at Chalkstring, which is a proven SIM solution based on everything we talked about, what is Chalkstring? Well, to try and summarize it, it's an, an integrated project cost management solution written specifically for construction contractors. Yes, it's cloud-based, of course, we've kind of touched on that already, but it's a single integrated system that manages all your project costs from end to end. So from estimating and pricing a job right through to final account. And it's written specifically for construction contractors. So it's not a generic product that's trying to work its way into construction. It's written by construction professionals. It's fully cloud hosted. So any person within the organization can access that same set of data. So typical, typical kind of roles listed around on that graphic. Um, everyone will have different roles and responsibilities. Everyone will probably have different um, authority levels within the business, depending on what their, their roles are. But everyone is accessing one single set of data that's always up to date. Um, and therefore, there's no risk of version controlling. Um, permissions can be used. We've discussed that. So you can, you, can, you can control everybody to what they can see, and what they can do, what, they, what their authority levels are. But you're accessing one set of data in the cloud at all times. And that then means it's connected. So going back to my example of a variation, if someone applies a variation to the project or you get a variation instruction from the client, instantly, as soon as that's in Chalkstring, the buyer can see they need to buy more materials. The contracts manager can see they've got to pay more subcontract labor. The 
commercial manager or the QS can then see they've got to charge for that on the application for payment. The directors can monitor the, the, the percentage profit margin you're making on that variation. So it's totally integrated and connected. And it's obviously, in terms of modern technology, it's based on Amazon Web Services. So one of the, one of the biggest hosts in the world. And this is about accessing that data using mobile technology on site, both iOS, uh, Apple products, and, and indeed Android. And the way in which it works is that you, at the heart of Chalkstring, have a database of your information. So a database of the materials you buy, um, the prices you pay from your different suppliers, the way in which you pay your subcontractors and measure their work. So it's a big database of your personal in company's information. And that then can be used to price up a job, to, to tender it, to estimate it, um, using traditional rate build-ups, bills of quantities, all those sorts of things, very traditional way of working to price your project up. And you can import client bills into the, the tender if you want to and do all that sort of thing. But ultimately, what you're doing is you're producing a, a, a tender for your client, a quote for your client, and also producing things like material bills and labor bills as well. So you know the quantities you need to do the project. Once you then get the green light to do the, the, the project and start work, rather than having to re-enter all that data into a, a separate spreadsheet for the, for the QS or the surveyor, Chalkstring automatically creates a copy for the commercial team. So the, the, the handover is a button press essentially. Um, and, and what it's done is it's creating uh, a copy of the tender so it can measure back and compare back with your budget at all times. And of course, you can go on and you can review the tender and you can squeeze more value out of it and you can recost it and you can do all the things you want to. But Chalkstring manages both the pre-contract aspects there and the post-contract at all times. So you've got your budgets and your actuals. You can handle variations or changes to scope, um, you know, remeasures, all those sorts of things, add and omit at any time you want to. So the surveyor is responsible for managing the scope of works at any time. In terms of procurement, Chalkstrom will manage your material bills and enable you to produce purchase orders for your suppliers at any time. Um, and those, those purchase orders are automatically generated and they're, they're generated on a drawdown basis based on the amount of materials you need for the project. Um, it knows who your suppliers are, what prices you've agreed. So therefore, really, it's all about managing uh, your procurement to make sure you're ordering the right quantities of the right materials at the right time. Um, and as soon as you place that purchase order, it's about accruing that cost. So you've got a real-time project uh, cost being built up at all times. It then manages things like deliveries and invoices. So very often there's a black hole in companies we speak to where they don't know where they are with their deliveries. They don't have a record of what's been delivered. So they're at the mercy of their suppliers. Well, Chalkstring not only produces the PO, but it manages things like delivery tickets and stores delivery tickets and it tracks orders so that when the invoices come in, they can be checked, verified, queried or approved, etc. So it manages the procurement process. Whoops, keep pressing the wrong way. Um, it's about tracking progress and automating valuations. It's a massively time-consuming part of, of any surveyor's life. Um, the software automatically generates valuations for you based off progress. It automatically generates applications for payment to your suppliers. And it automatically helps you control your subcontractor payments to make sure that you're not being ripped off by your subcontractors. You're tracking their progress and making sure that you're only paying them what they're entitled to. So operationally, those are the key cornerstones, the foundations of the product. It does all those things in one single system. So the different colors here are indicating different people, different roles potentially using the, the software, although that's not hard and fast. And what it's then doing is, of course, is taking all that information and producing real-time job cost reports for you so you can see how the project is tracking at any point and delve into the detail if you choose to. So it's a single system that manages the whole end-to-end -end process and then, of course, enables this information to talk to your accountancy software. Um, and it can talk to any account software. Those are the four most common ones we, we tend to see. There are many others, of course, and it will talk to them as well. But it's about pushing accounts information across from Chalkstring into your accountancy software so that you can then pay suppliers uh, and subcontractors and so on. A big part of Chalkstring is all, also about having these documented processes, and, and SIM is about processes. So it's all, all about supporting your ISO accreditation if you have it. And if you don't have it, it's just good practice to have procedures. So in here, you can see we've got things like standardized processes 
for your business. And these can be things that you bespoke and you can define when you implement the software to match your processes, or you can use the out of the box processes that the software has. It's entirely up to you. But what you're doing is you're defining how you want this software to work, that the order in which people do things. Um, you can define roles and responsibilities and permissions for every person within the organization so they can only do and see what you want them to see. And obviously part of that is is also defining authority levels, the, the cutoff point at which people can't make decisions and it has to be elevated up. So it's all about process, process, process. And this isn't Chalkstring, this is about SIM. Um, Chalkstring is a piece of technology that enables um, these kind of processes. So what I wanted to do here is try and give you just a, a bit of a, a bit of a, a brief demo of the uh, of the product. Given the time we've got, and the, this is a, obviously a, a webinar today, I've, I've not got time to give a full demonstration. That's not the intention here. What I would like to do, if I may, is just to try and dip in and show you some of the the key things we're talking about. Uh, and so, for example, here, if hopefully you can see my my screen now, I've just flipped across to the chalk string software. Um, and the first thing to say is that wherever you can access my.chalkstring.com, you can access uh, the software. So this could be tablets, walking around sites, this could be phones on the go. Um, uh, and I'm not being facetious here, but this could be iPads on holiday if you know management teams need to check in on any projects. It's just on the go and available at all times as a true cloud solution. The software has two sides to it without going into detail. Where you see the black toolbar here, this is the off-site side of the software. So this is where you would do your estimating and price your project up. You can see in here, you've got different functionality of admin and the account section and managing contacts and resources, which is all your materials uh, and your labor and your pricing uh, and, your, and your projects and so on. So this toolbar is all about managing your off-site pre-contract um, information. So if we look at projects, for example, we can then see we have a list of all the projects in here which you're working on currently, either at tender or indeed they could be live projects. And if you select any project, so let's take, for example, this Victoria Square Leeds project down here. If I have a look at the live project commercials via the project hub, that takes me into the other side, the post-contract side of the software, where I can then manage things like progress, materials, labor, applications for payment, all the tools you would use to run a live project. So at this point, we are looking at a specific contract, Victoria Square Leeds. And there's quite a lot of information to to explain this, so I'm going to try and cover just the basics really here. But what you've then got here is a dashboard which gives you all the salient information in one place. So I can see immediately on this project, we can see there's a bunch of different work packages that we're looking at here across this particular project. We happen to have seven different work packages. I can see the overall tender projection. So it's a reasonable size contract, this one. This is 8.6 million. But when it was tendered, we can see that we budgeted to make 13% on this job. I can see that we budgeted for about 36% of that to be materials. There was wastage allowances in here, labor, and so on. So those are my budgets, which were set at tender within the software. But in the real world, the contract value has increased slightly by 100K or so. Um, and again, we can see straight away the margin we're projected to make. So actually, we budgeted to make 13.1%. At the moment, we're on track to make 12.8. So with there or thereabouts, but it is less than we then we, we budgeted on the job. So it's given me that alarm bell straight away. And I can see a breakdown for all my key metrics. I can also see performance. So for example, this timeline here, is, the red line is showing me where I should be in terms of progress with each package based on the project program. Um, so if we take, for example, uh, let's just take, uh, let's say brickwork, we can see we should be 73% of the way through the project. As it happens, we're 54%. So we're actually behind program on that package of work. And you can see in there, you've got projected revenues, certified revenues, open applications, all the, the statuses that you'd have on a normal project. But the good news on this project is actually we're at 49% in terms of cost. So, so cost is being controlled really well, it's behind progress, but progress is quite a long way behind program. So it's giving you that level of information with the ability, of course, to drill in and to find out more information should you need to. So we can drill in and find out a whole lot of information about cost if we want to analyze why we are where we are on that project. So it's giving you a summary of the overall project. It's giving you a summary of your actuals versus your budgets. And at the bottom here, it's giving you all your key numbers, including things like projected margins here. So at the moment, we can see we've made 16.5% on the job, but we're on track to end up at 12.8% at the end of the contract. And this is being updated every minute of the project. We can start to see our costs in here. 
So we can see so far our costs in here are 3.1 million on the project, broken down as you can see in that black box. But the important thing here is you've also got 1.2 million pounds worth of accrued costs in here. This is a real time system. So it knows what purchase orders you've committed to, but not been invoiced for. It knows what subcontractor work has been done, but not been invoiced for. So it's giving you a dashboard of everything in one place. And this is just one particular project. But think about a contract, where a project, sorry, a business where you've got multiple projects running simultaneously. Then you have the ability in here to select any number of projects at the same time and get that key information <clears throat> for a number of contracts. So overall here, I can, I've, I've selected four different projects, as you can see, and I'm getting overall metrics now for revenues, costs, margins, etc., across my whole business. So once a month, when you're having management meetings, looking at cash flow and so on, you could pull off a report for all live projects, and it's going to give you that level of information with a obviously a, a breakdown. There's a lot, there's a lot of breakdowns obviously in here. I'm not I'm not going through the detail, but you can see there's that level of information. So that then means that let's let's take another step into a project now. So if I take let's say this project X here. <clears throat> so this is a a contract where we can see we've got a ceilings work package and a dry lining work package. Um, again, not trying to go into detail here, but just trying to give you this sort of idea of control is what you can see in this particular project is we have, in this case, four different bill items, four different partitions that we're, that we're building. And you can see how they've been costed there. So we're charging the client £205 per metre for that partition, and we're, it's going to cost us £162 to, uh, to, 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 to buy. And we can then see the quantities against that. So these are the quantities across the project. So that's the granular detail that the software is based upon. What that then means is that you can you can use this information not just for tendering, but also for managing your live project. So for example, if we wanted to build a valuation, say, well, what work have we done? You go to the progress section, you've got in here a list of all the different pieces of work you need to do. So you might say, okay, I'm looking at dry lining work and I'm stood on level three, for example. And immediately you can see I've selected just the four walls that we're building on level three. And that then means you can click on one. So the thing to think about here is walking around site with an iPad, updating this on the go. This is all cloud based. So on the fly, I could be just saying, OK, we've done that phase. We've done that phase and we've done 75 percent of that phase or whatever the figure is. Immediately, I've added value to the valuation. In this case, I've actually added 67 thousand pounds of the value to the project so you can very quickly walk around update your progress and that therefore means that when you then go to your applications for payment the software will automatically calculate your application for you <clears throat> so you can hopefully see in here we've got a breakdown of all the, the work you've done 559 thousand pounds it knows all the materials on site, which is calculating for you. It therefore knows value to date is 773. We've already put an application in previously at 513. So this application will be for 259,000 pounds. So it's automating this for you. And there's the options in here to be able to overvalue if you, if you wish to. I'm not going to go into that. But ultimately, then, if you press this generate outgoing application, it will produce an application for you with one mouse click. <clears throat> so it's saving days and days and days of time. And these applications it produces are detailed Excel files to send to your client. So in here, you've got a summary showing the, the key metrics of your application. And if you're a developer and you're not doing applications to your client, this is all about demonstrating to the bank the value, of course, that you've, you've generated at this point to release further capital. So we want paying 513K on this application go into each application and you can then see line by line the products, the zones, the quantities, the rates, the progress and therefore the applied values in there. So you've got a lot of information being produced for you, including materials on site, etc. It's doing all that for you automatically. So again, not trying to give a detailed demonstration, just trying to give you some of the flavour. And the other thing I wanted to show you is the, the procurement side of the software. So in here, if you go to materials this whole section manages everything to do with procurement so it's got a very clear material bill a dynamic material bill of all the materials you need to buy on the project it's got a list of all the orders 
on this project. So I can see those are all the orders that I've placed with their status, with their values. I can pick on any one of them. So let's just take that top one there. We can see it's a partially delivered order. And in there, we can see what we've ordered. Anybody with the approvals can come in here and see what they've ordered, the quantities, the rates, delivery tickets, invoices. So I can see there's an invoice against here. All that information in one place. And therefore, we can start to look at all the invoices in the system. And I can immediately see on this project, there's a bunch of invoices that have been queried or that need reviewing. And it's really about just having that level of control to be able to have all this information at your fingertips, depending on your, your role, of course, in the business. So straight away, I'm seeing an invoice there that needs checking. And actually what it's doing is flagging there that it's actually higher value than the original order value. So it's giving me those checks and balances. So really, that's what Chalkstring is all about. It's about, <clears throat> excuse me, estimating the job, running the job, managing progress, ordering materials, paying subcontractors, um, even down to things like issues and snagging. You can be using it for recording snags on site with site photos. So it's so much more than just cost, actually. But it's it's um, it's about managing projects effectively. And that's really as far as I propose to go on the, the demonstration today. That's, I, I don't want to go into any more detail because of, of the time. If you want to know more about the software or you wish to, you know, a detailed demonstration, please just contact us. We can obviously arrange arrange that to suit. So going back into the the presentation, obviously we're drawing towards the end now. I thought I just wanted to have a, a couple of slides on on who uses Chalkstring in the real world, because it's all great, everything I've said so far, but who actually uses it? So we've got a range of customers. Um, they range in size from quite small to quite large. They work in the residential sector, they work in the commercial sector. It's a whole range of different customers in here, or of, of quite a different mix of, of customers. But really, the, the key thing is that regardless of the trade they're doing, or how they're working, or what their setup is, what we're finding is that contractors are increasingly talking to us about this concept of punching above their weight because of these efficiencies they're instilling in the business and because of these processes it's about punching above your weight being able to take on the larger projects confidently knowing you're going to make good profit out of the end of it that's really where this is this is uh, benefiting contractors regardless of you know whether you're painting a wall or putting a flooring in or building a house it's that's that's not important the software can handle any of that it's just the um, it's the, the common principle is it's about um, about making yourself more efficient. Got a case study which you can download. Uh, if you go to the go to meeting um, chat log window, there is actually this case studies in there. We put it in there for you to be able to download. Um, it's a case study that talks about a particular customer SCS and how they use Chalkstring to help them control costs better, manage and plan their cash flow, and just make sure their projects deliver more than the targeted profit that's the key for them um, and in the case study you see there's a lot more information about that particular company how they work the kind of work they do um, and there's some, a lot more information in the case study so feel free to download that if you wish to um, but it's always good to give some testimonials of what our customers are, are telling us so in summary there's two aspects to this there's obviously there's sim and obviously then there's chalkstring and i'm trying not to confuse the two Chalkstring is simply a technology that helps you achieve SIM. So if you look at SIM, first of all, as a philosophy, it's about that sustainable business growth. So being able to deliver more with less, being able to scale the business, take on the bigger projects with a smaller team without ramping up overheads and employing more people. It's about giving you that finger on the pulse, predictability, and indeed the, the instant visibility of every project, how they're performing. If they're going well, great, move on. If they're not, drill in why they're not going well what's going wrong but do that in a timely way before it's too late and the project is finished and, and you can't make any impact so it's about that timeliness of having your finger on the pulse on your project performance it's about standardization across the business so standard ways of reporting standard forms standard processes across the business okay it's about supporting the whole ISO procedures. I don't want to overplay this because a lot of companies aren't ISO accredited, but the concept there, of course, is all about processes and procedures and workflows. And, and Chalkstring and, and SIM enable you to support that to make sure that those processes are being adhered to. It's about improving your governance and your control. So managing what your users can do and what, what they can see 
and auditing everything they've done, every keystroke, so that you've got that audit trail and that, that control over the, the whole business and that reassurance of the business. There's a governance aspect there, particularly if you're a medium-sized SME business or a larger business, governance is going to be a big thing. If you've got private institutional investors, for example, they're going to want to know you've got governance systems in place and SIM is a big part of that. And it gives that clearer accountability. Everybody using the system, uh, it, frankly, they're being tracked what they're doing. So you've got that accountability for everybody. Um, so you can have some interesting conversations with people um, if you need to. You can track down who's done certain activities in the software and have those conversations. So those are really sort of the benefits of SIM overall. Obviously, having looked at Chalk String, inevitably with the technology, you get more into the features of the product, but it's all about automation. It's the ability to produce a purchase order with a, with a click of a button, produce an application for payment at the click of a button. It's about these the automation, which is really taking out the tedious manual processes away from you, makes you more streamlined. It's about mitigating rate wastage, and wastage, of course, can be so much more than just lumps of plasterboard in a, in a skip as depicted there. It could be um, overpaying subcontractors, um, it could be men idling on site. It can be so many different things. It can be managing your, your wastage allowances, for example, if you budget 10% wastage, that actually might be quite conservative. It's about tracking and managing and improving your processes on, the, on wastage. And of course, every penny you save on wastage is a penny more uh, on your bottom line on your gross profit. It's about trapping out and eliminating errors. If you're not duplicating and re-inputting data again and again and again and again, you're going to reduce your errors. Um, and actually, funny enough, the background behind Chalk String, when it first started, going back many, many years, the uh, catalyst actually was a contractor that made an error transferring data from one cell to another, cost a lot of money in, in wasted profit. Um, so a real life example, if you can eliminate those errors, um, it, it, you know, it's going to obviously save you money, make you more efficient. It's about streamlining across the business. So all departments collaborating, working on the same set of data, confident it's always up to date. Um, and on the procurement side, things particularly where you've got potentially you've got a buyer placing the purchase order, you've got potentially site managers receiving the goods on site, and potentially you've got an accounts team receiving the invoice. It's about stitching those three groups of people together so that everyone's working off the same set of data, it has that visibility and that efficient way of working. It's about producing detailed automated job cost reports whenever you need in real time and of course it's about accessing this data wherever you are whatever device you're on whenever you want it in real time so two different sets of benefits depending on whether you're looking product or or sim but ultimately really they lead to the same thing which is this 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 overall efficiency and profitability which is why we're all in business There's also another case study you can download from the GoToMeeting um, window, which is a, a different case study, which talks specifically about one particular contract uh, that one of our clients was working on, where they they actually they tendered the job. I mean, I won't. I'll let you read the case study, but they tendered the job at 10.9% at margin because they wanted to win the contract, and they knew that was a very low margin uh, for for a subcontractor, certainly, um, and they tended it confidently knowing that if they secured the job, they could drive the margins up during the construction phase and make a good lot of money at the end of it. And actually they walked away at the end of the contract at 18.6%. Uh, so having secured the job at 10.9%, by the end of the contract, 18 months later, they walked away at 18%. So they drove the margin up by 70% simply by using, in this case, chalk string as a SIM solution to be able to post tender review effectively, uh, maximize the margins, control the supply chain, have more informed decision making, etc. And again, you can download that from from the GoToMeeting um, chat log. So really, that's all we've got time for. I've, I've allocated an hour for this. Thank you for your patience, and we've got another five minutes to go. So we've got time for a couple of questions. But thank you very much indeed for your your time. I hope that made sense. If we've piqued your interest at all, um, if you want to find out more or have a look at the software in more detail, please contact us, hello at chalkstring.com. Happy to arrange uh, any demonstrations you want with us at all. Just let us know. We can we can do that online or or face-to-face -face once this uh, this lockdown finishes. Um, so let's just have a quick look what questions we've got. Excuse me a second. Um, okay. So, okay, I've, I've answered one. And one, of the ones, one of the questions was, do you do face-to-face -face demos? Well, yeah, yes, we do. We do online demos if people want, or we do do face-to-face -face demonstrations. We'll happily come out and see customers. Um, no issues at all. 
obviously for the next few weeks things are a bit tricky um so online would be would be the way we go for now but of course we do face-to-face -face demonstrations just let us know what your needs are uh second another question here is how much does it cost okay so well there's no one answer to that the cost is obviously dependent on what your requirements are um which to a degree will depend how big your business is how many users you have etc chalkstring itself is a cloud hosted solution so therefore it's subscription based so you pay per user so the cost is, is scalable depending on the size of company so at the lower end uh, if you've got a small business and you've got a handful of users it will be paid per user so your cost will be tailored accordingly it will be smaller at the larger end you'll obviously have more users and obviously pay a higher price but that will be dependent on how many users you need what kind of setup you want what kind of training you need and we can obviously provide quotations for that but i think going back to that slide um there it is cost wise very scalable depending on what your needs are and we have customers across that whole spectrum um, and the costs will obviously change according to size and needs. Um, does it does it do estimating? Um, yes. So um, sorry, jumping around slides here. So yes, the, the first thing the software can be used for is actually is, is the estimating. So when you get a job into price, the first thing you can do is the, the pre-contract pricing of the job. The database within Chalkstring is used to hold all your materials or your activity, labor activities, the ways in which you pay your subcontractors or your prices. And you can use that information to, uh, to price the job. As I said, you can import um, client bills if you wish to, define the rates, put the quantities in, and that will then produce for you um, your tender. And actually, just on that point, got a couple of minutes, so just whilst on that point, what that will then do for you is produce a tender bill which you can send to your client which has a detailed breakdown of your your quotation essentially uh, but it will also have a draft material bill and draft labor bills as well so you can work out very quickly at tender stage what materials you need um, what uh, what labor you need to pay to pass to your your, con your contracts managers and so on um, and all that information is in the system so hopefully that answers that question about estimating it's a big part of the system um, that is it. There are no other questions. Um, they've got to be. They've got to be more questions than that. But we only have those three um, at this point. So, on that on that basis, guys, what I'll do is I'll wrap up here. Needless to say, if I piqued your interest, if you want to know more about either Sim, um, understanding more about what Sim is all about, or indeed take a closer look at Chalkstring, uh, arrange a demonstration. Just talk to us. If you've got any questions, whatever. Please contact us. Hello at Chalkstring.com or our phone number there. Don't forget to download the two case studies, which are in the GoTo window. Hopefully you've got those. If you can't get them, drop me an email, drop us an email, let us know, and we can send them to you. Um, otherwise, thank you very much indeed for your time to look at Sim, and hopefully speak to you soon. Thank you.